Oh, sh- Good afternoon, Mr. Vicky, and today we would like to present a learning and a memory presentation today. And first of all, allow me to introduce my group member first, Ms. Leung Kai Yi, Ms. Ellen Noor, and Ms. Abri Nature, and I am Pung Jun Khan. Before we start the uh, presentation, I would like to invite Ms. Abrina Jiu to define us the differences of the uh, classical conditioning and operant conditioning. This is the table of differences of classical conditioning and operant conditioning. Described by Ivan Pavlov, whereas on operant conditioning described by Burkus, Hendrik, Skinner. Moving to the next point, classical conditioning involves an inventory response and a stimulus. We can use this, uh, we can use pattern for example, as an example. Before conditioning, the dog will celebrate when the food is given, but it will not give any response to the ringing bell. During conditioning, the dog begins to associate the sound of the bell with the presence of the food. And after conditioning, the dog will begin to celebrate as soon as he hears the bell without the presence of food. Whereas on operation conditioning, it involves a more voluntary behavior and a consequences which is either negative or positive. The next point. Classical conditioning involves with no such uh, incentives, whereas operation conditioning, the learner is rewarded with incentives. Next point. Classical conditioning is passive as it requires no any effort to learn, whereas operation conditioning requires learner to actively participate in order, sorry, actively participate and perform some type of action in order to be rewarded or punished. The last point. Classical conditioning um, involves forming an association with some sort of already natural occurring event, whereas operation conditioning display of behavior is a must in order to get rewarded or punished. Moving on to the next slide. In an example of a coffee shop, coffee is unconditional stimulus and it will lead to conditional stimulus and to respond. Respond can be positive or negative. So why do people take coffee? Are they tired or they want to stay awake or they just want to get a new start? So before we understand what is classical conditioning linked to a Starbucks, let's watch out the video on their advertising campaign. We name it Monday can be great campaign. And here, Monday can be least favorite day of all the people. And first comic books, Superheroes comes on Mondays, appear on Mondays. And here, millions of babies also born on Monday. All this is Starbucks bringing out the positive image to all of us. For all of us. So when people want to taste coffee and they need coffee, they will come up with a Starbucks in their mind. And next, I will pass to my colleagues, Eleanor. Okay. Um, good afternoon, everybody. I will then now uh, explain about what advertising wear out means. All right, as stated here, Advertising wear out refers to the repetition of an advertisement broadcasted to the consumer market. And this could include generating awareness of the products amongst the consumers and communicating co sorry, communicating messages and gener generating sales, etc. Alright, uh, I would like to explain this. Advertising wear out means that I've said uh, just now that it is to broadcast messages and it's to generate sales for your products and for uh, throughout your consumer market. However, across different countries, obviously your advertising team would be different and different advertising team, you will generate different demands for the product itself. For example, in Thailand, they are used to having their team as feelings and resonance. They have, uh, they have very long advertisements that last five or even six minutes to actually generate um, to actually touch the customers and also to help to in order to endorse even more products and sales when it comes to the uh, consumer market. 
and this would obviously be different in other countries where advertisement is only 30 seconds long where 30 seconds long they only focus on the products and how the products will help you instead of actually touching deep into your senses and your feelings and your memories also Advertising where out occurs where an impression that the ad is no longer important or impactful that occurs when advertisement, the number of advertisement that has been allocated to the consumer market has reached its saturation point already whereas where the whole consumer market has actually seen this advertisement at least twice every day this has actually made the consumer to think this less important and take this into account and say hey I've already seen this so many times. Why am I still seeing this? Why do I need to buy this product? What, why is it the same again and again and again? This is what happens when advertisement wear out occurs. The product will be redundant, the message will be redundant, and basically everybody will think that it's not important at all. Right. Uh, next, I would pass this to my colleague, David Fong. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Uh, uh, before here, we try to understand that uh, the <coughs> Types of advertising where are we class we classify into two categories. First, we call it a reputation wear out and copy wear out. Where its characteristic is of the repetition wear out is because of the repetitive exposure of ads, and uh, this is highly dependent on the amount of advertising and some of because the reluctance of the consumer to process the information. So the copy wear out has been categorized as decay in the advertising effectiveness and due to the time passage and imitation of ad strategy uh, of the competitors and most importantly because of changes in the consumer knowledge about product Next please And let's take a closer look on the, uh, the, the advertisement of the toothpaste This is an example This is an uh, advertisement of the Oral B The Colgate And Sensodyne and what we can see here, the common point about the history advertisement is all about a tendency to recommending a toothpaste to the consumer. Well, we have to say that, next please. We have to say that nothing is wrong with the advertisement itself because we identified that age is a factor that we need to look into it because we all know that uh, the brand relationship is developed since childhood. And, uh, we are, it's already conceptualized and proven that how a learning is able to shape a memory therefore there's a common shaping of the cognitive patterns however because of the increased number of experience during the age growing they will influence the cognitive factors and most importantly what we can see here the young adolescents because we, we have to say children are very active listener but the knowledge is not necessary for what derived from the experience but the older, older adolescents with adults are tending to store a meaningful memories and with their experience generated during their lifetime and they may probably found that the dentist able to remind them to take care of their oral hygiene. Therefore, we will have to say that uh, wear out doesn't mean the effectiveness of the ads but to, uh, effective, uh, doesn't mean that the effectiveness of the ads to resonate the audience is decayed. However, we would like to emphasize on how we are able, first thing, to get to learn and how we are able to trigger the memory in a connectively. First, we can see the two stage learning model, as my, uh, my colleague uh, Abrina said, because you have to depend on the, uh, the learning behavior. In the voluntary behavior process, we can see that. First stage where I'll happen because they do not pay attention. We all know that learning needs attention in order to process the uh, learning, to process all the information to the uh, working memory in order to store it in the long term memory. Here we can see when attention is given because we will believe that most of the audience they are motivated and start to process the information. However, the second stage where out because we. we some of the, especially the adult uh, audience, they found that while well, the message probably is uh, irrelevant and feel irritated, that's what they, they, they start to not, not to process the information and store it in the long term memory. That lead to their food, uh, the non meaning, it's not meaningful to some of the consumers. That's why the fewer consumers remain, uh, remain persuaded. persuaded. Next, we will try to, see, to understand from the cognitive side because in the two-stage cognitive response model, first stage wear out 
the audience probably do, do not fully appreciate the message itself. However, when you start to understand what it is all about, they will reflect upon the logic thinking and to see what the benefits that they get from the uh, advertisement. However, the second stage will happen because they get tedious and after a few exposures, and then we generate a negative thought because this is a question about how habituation is versus the tedium. This is a very classic uh, example for the, uh, the active learners. In the same time, we would like to highlight that this is under an involuntary response process. So uh, we would like to conclude our presentation today and we would like to see that Mr. Vicky, do you have any questions for us? No. Thank you very much. We, uh, we thank you for spending your time with us to do a presentation and we hope you have a pleasant day. Thank you very much.